Welcome back folks. Today we're going to uh, at least get started on building up the Unibyte wall wart eliminator. Now if you heard me ranting in some of my videos I really hate wall warts. They just they're the, the lowest possible implementation of a switch mode power supply that you can imagine except for you know the old-fashioned ones that actually had transformers in their nice linear supplies. I don't mind them so much. But the, your average wall wart is just a piece of junk. And I have uh, like a half dozen of them more. No, maybe more like a dozen of them plugged in all over the place because that's just the way they make stuff these days. And they create a lot of noise in my environment, which I'm trying to eliminate. And I'm trying to eliminate that by building this. So it's going to have five outputs. It's going to have five volts at 10 amps, nine volts at 6.5 amps, and 12 volts at 6 amps. And I'm going to have these little panel meters in there for each of one of the voltages. The panel meters have uh, both volts and amps on them, so I can keep track of, uh, you know, sagging the voltage or the amount of current I'm drawing. And yeah, it makes it look pretty. And I'm going to use these panels, which are just PC boards I had made up. You see the scratching here? I'll get to that in a minute. And uh, I have one for the rear as well. It's got one for the IEC connect to the fuse holder. And I'm gonna have most of the outputs for these, the voltages will be on the back. And they'll line up, you know, five volts, nine volts, 12 volts, just like on this side. Now, let me get to the scratching here, just momentarily. Now, these, uh, these are the barrel connectors that I chose. For whatever reason, they, they were the right price and they came in the right quantities and they looked good from afar, they're metal. They're like a, a nickel plated, maybe white alloy or something like that. And they're simple panel mount, so that they fit most of, the, most of the criteria I wanted. But one of the problems is, okay, so I, I originally had the manufacturer or the seller tell me what the diameter of the thread was. He told me, and he was right. It's 13 millimeter thread and it fits in a 13 millimeter hole just perfectly. However, if you look up here, there's this groove around the top here. And uh, that's a bit of a bummer because once it drops in here, it is now off center. That groove makes the diameter there only 12 millimeters. So you got a millimeter of wobble and it's almost impossible to get these centered. So I'm going to have to live with them being off center as I tighten them up. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Now to go on with what we're going to do with the supply here, I've got this nice cabinet and we're going to mount everything inside the cabinet. Now, what do I have to mount inside it? Well, I have the power supplies. These are all Morn Sun power supplies. I'm using these because they're really good and they produce a heck of a lot less noise and crap than the wall warts do. And sort of, you know, close to a dozen power cords and plugs plugged into my outlets. I'm going just to have one. That's the 5 volt. This one here is the 12 volt. And they both came in these nice modules like this with the cases on them and bait lug thermal strips here. However, the 9 volt one, they didn't have a 9 volt one like this. I don't know why. Like it's just really odd. So this one has to have special treatment. It's got these stupid connectors on them, which I'll probably take off and I'll solder wires directly in. So this is the AC in and these are the, these are the DC out. I don't have connectors like this knocking about, so that's why I'm just going to remove these and solder wires in. Now, you can see in here when you look at this, uh, you know, the quality of these supplies, like, uh, you know, first of all, you have this common mode choke right at the input, and the tra transformers are beefy, like they're not like the really, really cheap little transformers you get in the wall warts. They got nice big MOSFETs, they're, like they're, they're very well designed, very well rated and the noise figures on them are always way better than what they advertise, which is usually pretty good anyway. So that's the 9 volt one. They'll kind of fit together in here somewhere. That's another thing to be decided how we're going to arrange everything. And we've got this. This is a, a, an EMI filter and the particularly good EMI filter, a dual stage and it has very very good performance and I have it not only to prevent noise from getting in and then getting out to the equipment but it's also to prevent noise from getting back out because sometimes switch mode power supplies can induce 
just as much noise into the power line as they introduce into your equipment. So that'll have to go in here somewhere too. And we're going to have a, a standard IEC power input into it with a power switch. Now I think I'll, I'll probably want to put wires on the switch before I actually connect it up. But So this, this could just pop right in here. That snaps right in there. And this will go in here eventually. Panel meters will just snap right in here like this. I can snap them in now. It's probably better to take them out of the cases first like this. And snap the cases in. Or bezels, whatever you want to call them. This one here's already got the wire on it. One of the nice things about doing up a panel as a PC board is that, um, you know, you just measure everything and have them make the holes for you and they all come back really nice. Everything fits really well. The one not so nice thing about it is they make you buy five of each. Oh, the cost is still not too unreasonable. I mean, uh, the f five sets cost me about 55 bucks. So it's, you know, about $11 a set. I don't know what I'm going to do with the other four sets. If you have any ideas, uh, leave them in the uh, comments below. And then these these pop right back in again. Just pop the lens in. And pop the meter in. Make sure you get it around the right way. You want I want the current on the bottom, the voltage on the top, and the lettering to come out readable. Just like that. And that snugs them in really well. And I guess the first thing I have to do is work out, uh, work out the layout here. So this is here what the front panel looks like loaded. And you can see what I mean by the barrel connectors being a little bit offset. Uh, you know, I don't know. I guess from a distance it doesn't ruin the aesthetic. But you know, you go to a lot of trouble to you know, make things look decent. And then you find out some parts are just weird. And I just have to find out how far forward now with everything mounted up here, how, what kind of spacing do I have for these power supplies? If we leave about a quarter of an inch there, we should be pretty good. And save with all of them. Put the and then this here, we should have lots of lots of room. Yeah, because so that's going to be fine for wiring. So I just mark those at that point. Just put a line on the back there. So like so, just give you a rough idea. Now I did find I had these um, these brass standoffs, so I'm going to use those for everything. They're a little bit higher than I'd like them. I, um, half distance would be fine, but that'll get over those screws there so we can actually mount these up as far as I need to here to give me the clearance. So the next step uh, at this point is uh, mark a bunch of holes, drill them, and uh, try to mount everything up. Now, one of the things I find when uh, drilling stuff like this, you'll notice here I've got all the, the positions are all marked out and I've, I've got all the drill points have all been center punched and you got nice little dimples there. What I find is it's best not to drill things like this with a drill press because it's really hard to get the drill bit right in the dimple. But I find that you know, with a an ordinary little hand drill here with the right size bit, you can, uh, you can get things pretty darn close because you can actually feel the bit drop into the dimple like that. Start off slowly, make sure that you're in the right place and then proceed with the drill. So that makes a nice hole there and then you can clean it up either with a larger drill bit or with a uh, countersink. So I'm gonna go to some other place and continue drilling all these holes. All right. 
after all the holes are all drilled just clean off the marker with a little bit of 99% isopropyl alcohol well, as much as you can I'm going to use um, these little screws here and I'm going to put a drop of blue Loctite on each and every one of them the reason I use blue, blue Loctite instead of red is that yeah you know just in case you can get it off and it gives you a lot more working time as well so just a, a little drop of that will go on and then we'll go through each and every one of these standoffs and get them in place. Now I'm not going to fully tighten them up until I get the power supplies in place over them. Sometimes it's better just to drop it in the hole. Just a quick shot here of what I've done with the 9 volt module. I've got the AC coming in here with these wires, remove the connectors and the DC coming out here and we've put in the capacitors 10 UF and the 0.1 UF capacitors that are recommended for for best noise and you'll find that in the documentation for Mornson and Meanwell and other power supplies as well. So let me continue manning all this stuff up. A couple of things else I should point out here, sorry about my mucky fingers making a mess, but um, these holes here, like these these pads, they're double-sided ground on these, and they're plated through holes. So this, uh, you know, this is going to allow very, very good connectivity between each one of these. So when I ground, I would have to ground, put a ground on one pin of each for each voltage. So that makes the wiring up a little bit easier. Now, another thing I would suggest strongly is that uh, when you tighten something up like this, like these, these nuts are very big in diameter, but they're very thin. And what will happen is if you try to tighten these up with pliers, you'll squeeze them in and they're going to bite in against the component and try to twist the component out of the way. So use an appropriate size socket or nut driver when you're installing these. Otherwise, it'll just give you no end of grief. All right, folks. So now I've got everything all mechanically mounted up and everything is, oh, yeah, everything is clearing everything else. And we've got a good idea now what it's going to look like. And it's just a matter now of doing the, the wiring of everything up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire these things up like they were modules. So I need the common wiring here on this base plate is going to be done. Right, connecting up the power to everything. That's all going to be done. Then I'm going to connect up all these. And I'm just going to have maybe uh, one, two, three, four, five, six and whatever power wires are coming off that, coming off that. And the same with the, the front panel. And then everything will be kind of put together. So all those connections will be made. I think that's probably the best way to proceed with the wiring up. And uh, really, that's really all the time I have for today because I've got a, a hard stop right now. But before I go, I was, uh, you know, I've got an upcoming uh, sponsor project. And this has got something to do with it. I found this. This, this was a... Uh, something I had misplaced for a while. I found it and I, I put it into use right now. Uh, if you can guess what this is, leave it down in the comments. It's a pretty interesting little thing. I mean, there, there's more than one piece to this. Well, there's more than one concept to it. And um, think about it, have a look at it and think about what it is is going on here. Uh, it be interested to see what you have to say about it. And also, yeah, I did mention that, you know, I've got, I've got a, a bunch of these panels left over. I'd love to have some suggestions what to do with them. And if I don't get anything reasonable is that I can do with it, I have to toss them out. I mean, how many of these things can I build? I might give one or two to a friend, but uh, there's going to be some left over. And, uh, you know, I hate tossing stuff like this out. And I also hate keeping it in a cabinet somewhere and tripping over it for the rest of my life. Anyway, we'll see you in the next video. I'll see you in part two and we'll get this all wired up and we'll check it out and we'll start connecting things up to it as required. All right. Thanks for joining me, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.